Hey, hey, hey. Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing today? All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So we got a big show today. I got this is I love it. This is the, the total Brady Bunch episode right now. Mark. Who's Brady? <laughs> Who's Brady? I, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm no so this, is, uh, this is like the magic bus, right? When right? when you when you have uh when you have this many people passionate, it's exciting. So welcome back, Prudence, ATN, Sean, Adam. Yeah. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. So we're going to have a big show today. We have uh, all three of you kind of compete in the same market with membranes. And I think this is going to be a lot of fun because every one of your product is unique. Uh, you guys have different philosophies on some certain things. And the whole idea here is to kind of just learn and teach people about what it is you do. And, uh, you know, the rules of the game are simple. You have a certain amount of time to answer. If you don't answer, Mark, tell them they're getting the, the BS pause, <laughs> right? And if that doesn't work, I'm going to, we're going to mute you. So it's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of fun. All right. So Mark, why don't you kick us off here? I, 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 all, all I have to say is those rules are for everyone. Uh, the solutions are for the entire marketplace. And without further delay, I think the first question comes from Prudence and uh, whoever it's directed to answer. And uh, let's move on, brothers and sisters. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. The first question. Go ahead, Prudence. What do Passive Purple and the story Herald and the Purple Crown have in common? Ooh, that one is for Adam, of course. Adam, <laughs> tell, tell us a little bit about it. Well, I don't know, eh? Because uh, it's about a four-year-old that goes and paints the world purple as a magic crayon or something like that. So I guess I'm turning the world purple, but not about the crayon part. <laughs> What's that, Mark? I just dropped an elbow on Adam. That was good. That way, that way. Perfect, perfect. All right, let's go to the next question here. This one, take it away. This one is for Sean. What does Intello Plus and the story of Goldilocks and the three bears have in common? Thanks, Prudence. Well, again, it comes back to comfort. And so Goldilocks just loved how she liked a good bed, good oatmeal, and of, and of course the good chair. And so it comes back to that sweet spot. And so Intello Plus is all about you know making sure that that sweet spot is perfect for it to do its smart stuff. So love it, love it. All right, Etienne. My friend, it looks like you are up on this next round. Tell us, Prudence, what is the question? All right, ATN, what do unicorns and Mazrex have in common? Well, I think currently they're hard to find, right? <laughs> uh, Mazrex is relatively new to the market here in the U.S. And so I guess uh, that's most likely what it is uh, at this point. Oh, love it, love it, love it. All right, perfect. Mark Willie, guess what? What's up? We are live on YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook right now, all three places with everybody. Uh, we got people tuning in, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. Please, everybody, hit that like and share button. Uh, and uh, let's bring everybody into the BS world of BS Friday. And we're not talking the typical BS. We're talking building science, and we're talking membranes. All right, Mark, your turn. You are up with question number two. We are going to start with Adam. Adam, in what situation is a fluid applied air barrier better than a sheet membrane? So liquid applied membrane would be better with the awkward houses, the awkward connections or an oddly shaped room. So when you've got multiple changes in roof directions or wall directions, instead of having to try and put all the tapes and membranes and uh, stick it or uh, attach it to a wall, we're applied to the surface and we have a hundred percent adhesion to them surfaces. Great answer. <laughs> you, you're conceding, you're conceding 10 seconds of your time. I see. Oh, we're, and retro <laughs> fit market. we're brilliant for the retro fit market. Adam, did you say oddly shaped room or notly shaped room? <laughs> I said oddly shaped room. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it. All right, here we go. Next question. Take it away. Uh, so, Sean, what is HydroSafe? Well, we sure dove into the deep end on this one here at Building Science. So hold on, folks, as I try to explain this. So HydroSafe is during the construction period where you're building in the winter, 
and you've got 90% relativity, uh, so relative humidity in the construction space, and in the insulation, you're at 50. And so right at the, the membrane plane, we're at 70%, and that's where, again, the sweet spot for Intello needs to be. And so it wants to make sure that we're not loading up the walls full of moisture. And so we want to make sure that the material then is in place to help out drying. And so that's where it needs to be. So again, a bit of a technical detail um, at the construction phase in the winter time. Perfect. Perfect. All, All right. right. Guess what? Etienne, your turn. Go ahead, Mark. What, what is the Etienne? What is the difference between, uh, I believe it's uh, Marex and Mapel? Yes, so there is a technological difference between these two vapor retarders. MyPel is a class two vapor retarder. It has a fixed US perm of 0 .0, uh, 0.68. Um, so you, you get the same permeability year in, year out uh, in both directions. Myrex is a smart directional vapor retarder. I'm sure you guys have heard of the smart vapor retarders. Those uh, membranes can adjust their permeability to the relative humidity in the room and therefore uh, maximize the drying of your wall. So uh, two uh, technology, two different um, kind of eras when those products came out. Uh, MyPel is over uh, 10 years old. Uh, Myrex is, 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 is a very new uh, state of the art technology. I have a timeout. I have a timeout. Uh, Prudence, can you tell us what permeable and non-permeable mean? Well, permeability refers to the admittance of moisture or vapor through a membrane or a material. Uh, Non-permeable means that there's no moisture that's getting through that membrane or material. And when we're talking about smart vapor, smart vapor retarders or smart membranes, these are vapor control layer products that change their molecular structure based on the presence of humidity. And their promise is that um, they provide solutions to moisture risk in, in wall assembly design. So essentially, because their molecular structure is changing depending on the humidity on either side, they can be open and dry when there's moisture that needs to get out and they can be more closed or less vapor, vapor permeable and prevent moisture from getting in from the outside. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, so Mark, you know, I know I was gonna do number three, but here's here we're gonna switch it up a little bit. I'm gonna have you, uh, or you, and you ask the questions to the third questions, because what I wanna do is I'm gonna show everybody's product while they answer their question a little bit. How's that sound, everyone? Dive in, brother. All right, so here we go. So, okay, question number three. Adam, uh, as your video plays in silent mode, you have 90 seconds to tell us what are the application temperature and RH limitations for your product. Okay, so with our product, we um, have temperature limitations where we can't go on if it's too cold. So anything below five degrees, which I think is around about 40 um, Fahrenheit, you guys, I believe so. So we can't, just like cement or anything water-based, because we are water-based, we, we can't go on anything. Um, with humidity, we can go on damp surfaces. We don't really have that as an issue with our product because um, it will just dry itself out. Um, that's it, really. Love it, love it. Perfect, Thank perfect. You, I love it. You got a question, Mark? No, I just, uh, I like the video in the background, so I'm happy. But what can I say? <laughs> yeah, I know. I got, I got, I got moving parts here. So listen, if everybody's just joining us, we are talking about membranes here today on BS Friday. It's all about house membranes. And for me, it's been a really fun journey because I just got to take a class with Sega, which was a lot of fun. Uh, not only did I film and do some things up there, but I literally took the class. So what you guys do just impresses me and the thought you put into all of these things. So listen, if you're just joining, that's what we're talking about today. Thanks for joining us. We are now going to uh, Sean. Question number three. Give me one second. I want to load it up and then we're going to hop right in. That time comes off of Sean's clock, by the way. My, yeah, my time loading it up. <laughs> Prudence kind of already talked about, I think, some of the, uh, you know, again, the vapor permeability of the product. So 
you know, we'll show it. So this is that one face. So get to ask it, and I'll talk about it. Okay. All right. Uh, what what does perm range and inflection point of Intello compare to our other guests' products? Mr. Sean, 475, take it away. Yeah. Well, so again, with our product, we've got that one surface that has less than 0.13 perms. And on the back side, where it can open up again, that molecular change can happen with the relative humidity, can get up to 13 perms. And so, again, we've got that inward drawing that can occur with this particular membrane. So again, we talked about again the, the you know relative humidity of the process. So if we've got the pull coming, we're drying inward. This can open up when we get the higher relative humidity in the wall and allow it to open up. And so, Sean, that higher relative humidity you're talking about, that seventy percent, that would be what we would call the inflection point, where it would yeah. open up or close. Yeah, yeah, and so again, the curve as it goes, so it starts to open up even further. But really around that, you know, 70% is when we get the optimal drying because we know that mold growth starts about 80%. And so if we can get that moisture out, we're making sure that we're not having any issues and have long-term durability and drying um, with our wall systems. Great. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, <clears throat> Etienne, you are now coming into play here. Let, uh, let me get to your question. Mark, you ready? Okay, Etienne, are there any climates where Marex or Mapel are not recommended? Oh, that's a very good question. So, um, first of all, those membranes, both of them you're referencing, are interior membranes. So, they're they are, uh, intended to be used on the warm side of the building. So, climates like climate zone one or two, where you basically have that humidity on the outside of your building, uh, do not require an interior vapor retarder. You actually need the vapor retarder to be on the outside wall to stop that warm, humid air from getting into into your building and meeting a cold surface that would be the surface, uh, uh, for example, the interior drywall that's cool because you're cooling your, your house in, in a cooling dominated climates. So yeah, definitely there are climates where we do not recommend um, vapor retarders of any kind. Um, and that would be climate zone one and two uh, for most cases. And that's also what the building code is. Um, specifying so uh, climate zone five four five six seven they they require that you address uh, vapor in a form um and uh, that's uh, we, we of course follow those recommendations thank you that that video cracks me up uh sean <laughs> doesn't the guy in the video look like sam he does yeah it's a it's a small world in this building science community. I know it's not, uh, but uh, what's next, Dave? Do we have anyone listening today, or is it just the six of us yeah. having a good old time? <clears throat> no, no, no. We we have some people listening. We got uh, Shane McNutts out there. Hey, Shane. Good morning to you. He says good morning. Uh, had a good conversation with Shane today. Always love it when he tunes in. We have Andrew Seely. Fun start morning all joining us today, which is great. And then we also have Scott Farbman. Oh. Farbman, I think. Is that how you say it, Farbman? Yes, Scott. I hope you could bring a question to the crowd and really uh, mix it up a bit. I, 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 Scott lives in the Midwest like myself, and uh, he, he's an engineer. Uh, and yesterday I looked at uh, my, my humidistat, and it was 92% humidity here nice. and 64 degrees. So uh, – I think some of these smart membranes would be uh, pretty helpful. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Mix it up a bit. Scott lives in the Midwest, like myself, and uh, he, he's an engineer. Uh, and yesterday, I looked at uh, my my humidistat, and it was ninety-two percent humidity here, <laughs> and sixty-four degrees. So uh, I think some of these. Wow, what's going on there? I think I think you wanted to hear me twice. It was deja vu. <laughs> I don't know where I was. I'm looking. I'm like, your mouth's not moving still. I, love I, it. Thought, I, it, right. I thought it was just me having a flashback. We also we have Alex White's joining us. Hey, Alex. Good morning, all, and good afternoon. My side of the pond starting the weekend off with a BS bang. What, a, what what are the odds we got someone calling in that has the same last name as one of the presenters? So bizarre. Really weird, isn't it? <laughs> you, you know you that guys guy look yet. like brothers for crying out loud. <laughs> love yeah. it. Love it. 
Hey, look at this guy. We got a good old Tim Seams Nishiha. What's happening, Tim? Let's catch Tim up, man. Got some questions for us. His product loves good membranes and tapes. Right, right, right. And we got some likes. We got Robert Beeks and Christina Admin uh, giving us some likes as well. Love it. What? Uh oh. Uh oh. All right. Who knows how to read this? <laughs> Uh, that 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 means vapor permeable in three different languages. Not many <laughs> people can decipher that. Uh, you know what, uh, Mark? I actually have something for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got another comment. Then we're going to get back into it. Stefan Speckmeyer, good morning or good afternoon from Germany. Stefan shared this uh, BS Fridays three times during the week. That's how excited he was. So extra yeah. points for Stefan. Love it. I love it. I love it. And then here's your answer, Mark, so we don't we can get through the BS from Tim Seams. Good membranes and tapes. That takes a lot more characters of, of this al alphabet to do that, I tell you. Absolutely. I, I just want to know how he changes his keyboards to write in whatever Chinese or I, I so, don't know. Like, so there's a secret Tim told me. He has his uh, uh, American keyboard, his English keyboard in the treehouse, and then he has his uh, multilingual keyboard in the Airstream. So he just <laughs> one other. And then, does he have a zip line that gets him from one place to the other? I and wonder. that's my BS answer for today. <laughs> Love it. All right. So we got some more questions for you guys, Etienne, Sean, and Adam. Are you ready? Bring it on. All right. Yes. Here we go. Prudence, take us away, please. Peter Yost once said, if we can take the worst automobile on the market and drive it around in the rain when it's seven years old, how come we cannot keep our buildings dry? Etienne, mm -hmm. you go first on this one since you were last <laughs> on the other three. Oh, Yes. Well, that's that's a good I'll question. Let, I, I mean, it, up. It, it, yeah, it's, it's a big question. I mean, um, so obviously, I think Peter is is addressing moisture in general. Um, the, the major the main thing we have to focus is any water that we have from the exterior. That's where we just have to start. We have to make sure there is no uh, continuous wetting through the season when it rains. So for that, we need to make sure we detail our exterior envelope very, very well. Um, but then the, the, the second part is we have to also think about vapor and air movement and in particular um, convection flows. That's the biggest risk that I see when it comes to making sure our walls stay dry. And uh, how comes we, we can do it? Well, I think, honestly, the U.S. has seven climate zones. Then we have a marine climate. It's just confusing. There is so much going on. You have a huge industry with many, many players and many voices and contradicting voices. You have marketing. So there's really a lot happening that just makes it overly complicated, in, in, in my opinion. So, uh, yeah, yeah, but I don't know. I can't solve that one. Love it. All right. So same question this time to Sean. Yeah. I mean, you know, Etienne really nailed it there because we're really dealing with like the four issues, right? We deal with water, we deal with air, we deal with the vapor and we deal with the insulation. And so again, if we've got the house and building designed properly where we're not getting the water in, then we're really doing a good job of keeping the house durable and resilient for a really long time. And then when we get to, you know, air movement, we've got, you know, uh, holes in our walls and this is like the highway for a lot of that vapor uh, to then get into our walls and have problems so we got to make sure that we you know seal it all up make it airtight so that that you know vapor is not getting in yeah yeah for sure all right adam go for it man okay well i'll, I'll back s here now we need to uh, concentrate on the facade of the building first making sure that that's completely sealed and um, when we're looking at our buildings um maybe looking at liquid membranes where we can seal in one continuous barrier um, so that we've got no uh, joints or, or making sure, yes, yeah, 100 percent adhesion. Yeah. Excellent. OK, uh, thank you, Peter, for that uh, great story of the of the car versus house. We all love it. It's uh, beautiful. What do we got next, Mr. Dave? <clears throat> OK, you ready, uh, Prudence? I'm ready. All right, so we asked this one of uh, ATN already. Uh, so I think we just can jump right to Sean. Actually, you know, on these membranes, I'm not sure that we have temperature ranges for insulation, but you guys tell me about it. Let's start with you, Sean. Yeah, so, about really, comes, tape? Yeah, so it really comes down to the tapes because again, making sure that we get the adhesion when we're putting on. So you can put on the Intello, you know, any temperature you want. 
Um, but when you're sealing up from, you know, one upper layer to the bottom layer of the membranes, you know, the tapes is crucial. So the Tescon Vanna tape that we would, you know, recommend you put on, uh, minus 15 Celsius um, is kind of the crucial part. And then even with that, you can use a hair dryer and make it work to like minus, uh, minus 25. So we've, we've seen different techniques in those lower temperatures. Perfect. Perfect. Go ahead, Adam. How about you? Again, yeah, anything below um, five degrees for us in the UK, we, we can't install our products because it's water-based. But anything above, we're, we're fine. Oh, that was my bad, ATN. We do need to go back to you because we yeah. heard from Adam before, but we yeah. didn't hear about Siga tape. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Um, so for us, it's uh, 10 degrees um, Fahrenheit or, um, sorry, 14 degrees Fahrenheit minus 10 Celsius. Um, the membranes typically on the inside is not a problem because uh, it, it's usually a little bit warmer than that. Um, yeah, but say, same answer as, as Sean's basically. Perfect. Perfect. Go ahead, Prudence. Did I cut you off? No, I was just saying it's good to know. So we can, we can uh, even if the construction schedule gets behind and we start getting into winter, there are workarounds, it sounds like. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. It's more of a problem with exterior products in my experience right. where it's, yeah. it's it's more sensitive and you know you have moisture and all and you know other kind of elements that make installation tricky i remember the days atn where where you had some tapes that didn't have the release layer so it, was, it they have a different kind of adhesive on them and we had to keep those things in coolers in our trucks and at the end of the night, bring them into the house and just like the batteries on our drills, it was, it was cumbersome. But with a lot of the tapes that you have today, those things are more versatile than the workers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're just gonna skip over that comment. <laughs> For sure. They can be temperamental, but they work when they need to work. Just like the workers, amen. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay, Prudence, next question. Durability is a hard one to answer. How do you validate and what materials do you not work on? It actually says, do, do you not work on? <laughs> I saw that, but, I, but I, I thought that was an extra do. I didn't want to do, do. <laughs> Too much do, do. <laughs> all right, all right, BS pause. Okay, who's gonna answer that one, Prudence? I think we're gonna go to Adam first on that one. All right, Adam, have at it. Okay, so durability, because um, my products are adhered to something because we're a liquid membrane, our durability is really, really good compared to traditional tapes and membranes. So because we have 100% adhesion, it's really hard to cut through and destroy the air tightness, where if we had a paper membrane, a little cut, the air tightness is gone. Um, and what do we stick to? Um, Stick to a blanket, <laughs> if you don't mind, my friend. We stick to everything. That's just what we can do. Concrete, plastic, glass, metal, yeah. wood, anything. Yeah. The, wow. the, the, so does that... Top trousers. So does that mean I can patch my canoe with Passive Purple? You can give it a go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you some. <laughs> that, would, that would be great. I'm One of my favorite qualifier view. questions of what do you stick to is the Stephen basic line is, do you stick to wet glass? That was always his thing. And when you said, do, do you repair canoes? I, I think of that commercial where the guy takes a screen door <laughs> and puts his goofy product on it and starts paddling down the crocodile infected <laughs> water. Uh, Anyway, Sean, Sean, alleviate my BS pause, please. Hey, no worries. Yeah. So when it comes to materials, again, is is you know all of our products have the warranties. Um, you know, in, the Proclaim must have got a ten year warranty. Um, but again, it always comes back down to operator error. So making sure the installers are well trained, know what they're doing, and all of us have really good instruction. Um, you know, either manuals or videos to ensure that we can teach it, to ensure that the product goes where it is. Um, when it comes to the tapes, like everything else, um, you either need a primer in some cases, or you just need to make sure you get rid of the dust so that it can stick. Good enough. Yeah. Don't dust. forget your roller. Yeah. 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 In our case, it's the lovely press fix. 
How about you, Etienne? Etienne! So, yeah, so I think we have to uh, differentiate a little bit because we were talking about compatibility on the one hand and durability on the other. So for compatibility, um, we as a manufacturer, we actually have a whole team of uh, chemists and we test chemical compatibility of materials in the lab. Uh, uh, and we, we see is there any chemical reaction happening first and secondly what we want to also assess is how do we stick to these products over time so there are artificial aging chambers you basically heat up products to uh, uh, 140 degrees cell, uh, Fahrenheit height and that simulates um, one week in such an oven simulates a year and when we um, bring our products to the market we test them for at least 50 uh, weeks, which uh, simulates 50 years. Um, also for SEGA, we have been in business since 1966. So we have a lot of like real case scenarios, retrofits, where we can then compare product samples. And I think it's similar with uh, ProClimaline that Sean has. They have been around for a while and have that. And Adam, for you, this is um, going to be uh, coming, you know, you're collecting, you're learning every day, right? <laughs> yeah, every, so, yeah, every single day, every day is a school yeah. day. Yeah. Every day is a school day. Is that what you said? Yeah. Every day is a school day. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I know. Been 10 years. So. Yeah. You've been around 10 years. Adam, how long have yeah, you been 10 around? Years. 10 years. Good. Sean, your company? Yeah. I mean, 475 has been around for eight years, but we brought in Proclima and Proclima has been around for 30 plus years. Yeah, and Sega has been around what two years now, Etienne? Is that what it is? Yeah, it's, it's uh, coming up to uh, plus uh, another fifty. And uh, no, since uh, sixty six, yeah. so yeah, that's been Good. that's been a while now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, you guys are all in the market. You're all tested and proven. I think it's great. So, all right, let's move on. Next uh, question, and after this one, we'll go to the audience. What do you think? Let's do it. Sounds Good. All right, go ahead, Mark. Ask this one. Okay, varied width widths widths this is a big word for me uh varied widths and options available for varied applications i think what that's asking for is uh when it comes to windows and when it comes to penetration uh is it one size fit all or are there options that cater to uh the complexities of a building go ahead atn so um, this is something that we we are very proud of. We have a process called customer specific production, and we collaborate with large offsite manufacturers uh, across the world in figuring out what's the best product for their process. And this is something that uh, we can customize everything that you need. Um, but uh, once again, often uh, for us, the goal is to keep a simple system especially if we if you build on site that you have one tape for the outside and then the the customization is the width maybe a pre-fold or a different uh, slate backing so kind of like keep a simple line and 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 you know tweak it a little bit wow. sean go ahead please yeah so the intel plus comes in three rolls again uh you know because it's uh european based german made you know, it comes in metric, so it's 1.5 meter uh, by 20 meters for the short roll. Standard is 1.5 um, by 50, and then you've got the double wide. So for most most projects, again, the double wide will fill up your whole wall, and you're just rolling it out. And your tapes as well, Sean? Yeah, Tesco and Vanna, 100 feet. Um, and again, comes in different widths, standard ones, uh, 60 mils or 2 and 5 eighths, and then can range up for what you need as well. And like uh, most of the products that we're talking here, I mean, we can cater to whatever you need, every different application. We kind of always talk about, you know, there's the standard ones we want you to use. And if you need something specific, then we just go to the catalog and pull out what you need and, and offer it to you. So I remember taking some of those rolls and, and putting them on the chop saw and making my own sizes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? All these companies like, like you know, uh, uh, like Etienne's company as well. And, and Sean's company, you know, Adam's a little bit different in this because his application uh, can, can do a lot of things all at one time. But I have to say, uh, I don't, I was telling you guys, I actually went through uh, the SEGA North American training course and you're right with all these different applications, you know, and this speaks to everybody, not just because I did that training, those different size tapes and those different size applications make it very easy for a lay person like myself that spends more time in front of a camera and less time in front of a building actually installing something. I was able to, to use the system and the system really made it a, a powerful tool because 
it, it just helps with the labor shortage we have. It makes it simpler for people to learn and it, and it, and it reduces the chance, I think, for mistakes on site to happen. Is that a fair, fair answer? It's a fair answer, and 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 Adam, for you, you use a uh, your various yeah. sizes are a sprayer, a roller, and a brush, right? <laughs> yeah, tell us, Adam. To keep, to keep it uh, simple, we've got two versions. We've got a liquid version, and we've got a brush version. Liquid version is for your cracker spray machine, and then we've got the brush version, which you can just pick a paintbrush size and you can paint it on. So that'll paint around all your junctions, all your joist ends, all your service penetrations and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you got a really neat product there, too, because, you know, those those hard to reach places, uh, uh, I, I would imagine that that helps you out doing that. So that's cool. All right. We got more questions from do we have questions from the audience, Jen. Let's take a look here. Comments, comments, comments. Give me one second. Okay. Todd DeWalt. Hey, Todd. Good morning. I need to learn to type in a different language. <laughs> good, good to have you. All right. Jennifer has a comment. Installation is far more successful in a controlled environment. All of these products lend themselves to offsite construction to optimize air tightness and controlling bulk water. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And at the end here, we're going to talk a little bit about offsite. Would you guys be okay with a little impromptu nope. offsite? Mm -hmm. nope. Love it. Love prefab. We can talk it all day long. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Our good friend Anthony Gooday says very interesting. Uh, Scott Bartman, Jennifer Croker Scooper is off if's offsite assembly cost competitive to stick built yet. Well, that's an interesting one. And I think Jen will answer that offline because that's not about today's show. But if you're not building offsite, you're 100 years behind the times. That's the simplest way to answer that. Cost-wise. Is, is someone filling up water balloons in the background or pushing a squeaky cart? What is that? I'm sorry. That's me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep myself until I'm, I'm, I'm called for it. <laughs> uh, it's it's, it's um, uh, my house getting holes uh, for uh, the radon pipe. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> okay, I'm glad it wasn't just in my head. Thanks, brother. <laughs> well, make sure you air tighten those holes, right? Let's stop those penetrations and leaking. All right, Etienne, maybe maybe use some cigarettes. Thank you, I'll send you some product. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> yeah, sure. Adam and Sean will both send you some product to use. Now that's collaboration right there. All Team right. Effort. Let's keep moving mm -hmm. here. We got George Ryman. Good morning, George, from hot Phoenix, Arizona. You know what I've learned about George? Is it seems to be hot in Phoenix all the time. Yeah. <laughs> you got a lot of hot weather if you if you live in Arizona. That's for or if that's for sure. All it's right. Climate zone H O T, I believe, is what they say. <laughs> okay, moving through. We're gonna we're gonna take a quick question before we go through some more comments. Todd DeWalt, question. What's the most common mistake made by installers that make your product look Bad. That's a great question, Todd. <laughs> why don't Why don't we start this one off with uh, Sean? Go ahead, Sean. Yeah. yeah, the biggest thing too is when it comes to the tapes is they just don't install it properly. You know, when we're trying to make airtight buildings and you're making those connections between you know different membranes, when they don't you know either press the tape on properly, um, and again you can get you know chance of air leaks. So the big one again is just not falling the you know that's the operator error part. So making sure they're getting the tapes to stick properly. Yeah, yeah. All right, Adam, go for it. Um, it's probably people thinking that one product will do everything. So thinking my brush product will go around a window and cover 10 mil gaps and it just won't. So we have to work with different products like the Seegers and the Intellos. So each one of us has a has a job on a construction site. It's just not one product will do everything, and it's the do all of all products. I know I've been playing around since I've been on here, saying about how great my product is, but we all we all complement each other, and it's understanding whose product is fit for each purpose on the uh, construction site. As 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 Prudence would say, it depends. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it depends. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Etienne, you go for it now. Well, I think in my experience, it's really that people don't le read instructions and have kind of an approach of, you know, they, they, they know what to do. Um, and I think sometimes it's that reading instruction, understanding them, following them, and you have a perfect result. Um, yeah, most common thing that we see is really that people don't take enough time to tape right um, uh, and, and have that attention to detail that 
once you do it right, um, you, you get faster with that. So, Dave, this is a per perfect time to play your video uh, <laughs> of the application. And while you do, let's put a question up and, and, and get the answers going. Well, let me get it up here and ready to go for you real quick. You're putting me on the spot, Mark. <laughs> I, I am. And Todd, thanks for that question. Uh, that's why both Sean and Adam and ATN, Prudence, uh, Dave and I, we all had the targeted response to that. Uh, yeah. There are trainings that are there. Everyone is here to share and to make these buildings better. That's why we're here. So uh, it's just brilliant. Your question was spot on. Uh, the installers want to do a good job but uh, they might not realize that they need a different tool. So if you need a different tool, uh, that's what you need. You don't, you, don't, you don't show up with PVC pipe if you're gonna drywall. So right. uh, you don't show up with shingles if you're gonna do electric. So grab the right tool and, uh, oh, look at Dave showing off. Look at that. You like that? I'm rolling it out. I put the tape on, you know, this, this is, I mean, it's real interesting, right? The layer system that a lot of the guys have, you know, uh, Sean and, and Etienne in particular, uh, the process of putting it on and using the different size tapes and everything that we had simplified this process so much that I look, at, I look like a natural. <laughs> so the other part I like about this video is uh, with most of the products here by, by <laughs> yeah, there you go, Dave. Yeah, uh, yeah. With, with all the products here, a wall is a wall is a wall, uh, yeah. but the the seams and the windows is a weakness is a weakness is a weakness right and uh so that's why you three are here to de to demonstrate many solutions that cover that versatility of seams and of windows whether it's on site or off site right those are those are our points uh besides the large square footage that's easily handled it's those intricate areas of the right tool and the right application Absolutely. Yeah. One of the uh, one of the things that has come up for me quite a bit when I was working on smaller single family projects that have really beautiful, nice wood frame windows is how you handle the vapor profile of the window installation. Right. Because when we have wood windows, we don't want to use a, a vapor impermeable product in that rough opening that is potentially going to stop drying, right? Because we, we can imagine that no matter how well we install windows, some water, some bulk water or some moisture is gonna get in. So I'd be curious to hear from you guys um, what, you, what you think or what you would recommend as best practice for having a, a, a strong vapor profile for a rough opening with a wood window. Go ahead, pick who you wanna start with, Prudent. Let's start with Sean. Me? All right. Uh, well, a couple things. One is if we're looking for kind of a code built project right now where it's like a flange window, um, you know, typically we're taping on the exterior side, you know, the sides and the top to ensure that water is not going to get in. And then we leave the bottom side out because most of these windows might, you know, fail in 25 years. And so we mm -hmm. want to make sure that we're not you know, taping them and you know, keeping water in. Uh, but on the inside, where again, we're, we're also taping to have that air barrier system, that continuity of the air barrier, um, putting in the right tape that can allow for, you know, either vapor open or vapor closed, depending on, you know, the profile. Um, mm -hmm. So again, uh, we've got tapes just like Sega, where um, you've got that option of choosing a vapor closed or vapor open, depending on what you're, you know, connecting line in. In the high performance and passive house, we're now, over insulating the frames on the exterior side then again you might want to have a vapor open so then you can make sure you've got drying to the inside because you've got that extra you know sweater detail on the window right we want comment. i have a comment on that prudence so uh we did a very uh high performance home it was it was uh it was less than one ach before we started uh our our insulation and the house had a lot of drywall, a lot of tile work. So the outside was sealed. We were dried in. Uh, but the client wanted the wood windows and they wanted them um, unfinished because they didn't make the selection right. for stain or paint. And throughout the process of the project, be because th there was so much moisture in the house, those wood windows were going bazonkers. Uh, and after that job, uh, we, we decided that pre-permitting, your windows were going to be selected and they were going to be delivered pre-finished. 
Uh, and then we also covered them with a film to protect them from, you know, workers that aren't aware of their surroundings, right? I'm, I'm doing my job, but I'm not aware of other people's jobs. So we have, we have these buildings that are sealed, right? But the process of construction, that, that mud and that thin set that's around, um, and some of our floors, of course, get covered in, in concrete for the radiant. That's a lot of moisture. So those wood windows on the inside, sometimes I think it's a consideration to get them, or all the time, pre-finished or filmed. That's a smart approach. Yeah. So, Adam, I'm curious about your product in terms of its vapor permeability. So I've got two versions. I don't yeah. know. I don't normally talk about the second one, but I've got vapor closed and I've got vapor open as well. So in the UK, we're a bit different to um, America, where you've got so many different climate zones. But we use vapor closed on the inside, and we use vapor open on the exterior um, around the building and around um, around the window openings as well. But we we, could, we 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 can change them about however we need to in different climate zones. So if it's in a hot country, we'll have the vapor closed on the outside. We normally have the um, AC on the inside with the cold and the hot on the outside. Give us give us some numbers here. How closed and how open are we talking? Ideally, in SD values. So I, that's SD okay. Values, you can give us SD between um, between twenty and thirty. Okay. It all depends as well. We we can change that because we can put a different thickness on as well. So we can change that through the thickness of the layers we're putting on. But I can up, I can upload a link to our. Uh, SD cards as well, so you can all see that. I'll argue yeah, that, that would so be I'll great. And when you're looking at it, and for those of us stateside who aren't used to SD values, or uh, Canadians who may be somewhere in the middle, <laughs> <laughs> SD values are vapor diffusion resistance. So that talks about the the degree of resistance uh, a material has to allowing vapor through. Whereas when we talk about permeability or permeance. That's more about the permissivity, the the allowance of, of vapor to go through. So it's like the inverse. All we right. Deep right there, I tell you, we don't need to really science. I, I think that was a good point, Adam, right? If you have one layer, it's different. Uh, if you need multiple layers, it, it depends what you're trying to achieve in the wall, right? So mm -hmm. understanding what your what your conditions are dictates what you need to do. Right. Yeah, exactly. so the film thickness. We can check the film thickness and check it and see see what we've got. Yeah, verification, right? That 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 you're achieving it. Yep. Well, it's also some Adam said that I think is important for everybody to hear is all climate zones are different. That's right. right. It, it's not the same application for somebody living, I would say, in the north of Canada as it is as somebody that's uh, living in the Keys. I would imagine, right? That's yeah. A, Go ahead, Prince. You can you can you can really bang some drums on this. Well, I, I wanna I wanna let ATN answer the question, but but first I just wanna second what everyone is saying, which is that designers really need to understand the primary moisture drive in their particular climate and then specify that critical vapor control layer in the wall assembly according um to which direction the vapor drive is going, which parts of the year. And, you know, if it's, if you have a mixed climate where it's, it's going one direction, one part of the year and the other direction, the other part of the year, choosing uh, a location that's more in the middle, that's protected to allow drying to both sides. I mean, I think everyone knows this, but when we airtight these buildings, uh, we really, really need to be careful, and especially when we're adding more and more insulation on them, that we're providing drying in at least one direction, ideally two. Um, yeah. And that and that gets tricky where we have these mixed climates because, you know, when the vapor drive is switching during different parts of the year, we want to have enough protection in the winter and enough drying in the summer. And that's why these smart vapor retarders are, are so great. Um, ATN, I'd love to hear your answer to the window question. And then I have one more question after that for all of you, if we still have okay. time. 
Yeah, actually, I'm going to second uh, everything Sean and Adam just said. Um, also, our approach is we have two versions of our tape. Uh, one is uh, semi-permeable, the other one is vapor-closed. And so um, in a heating-dominated climate, the, the semi-permeable will be on the exterior and the vapor-closed one on the interior. We make sure that we have uh, quite a nice safety factor in between those. It's typically times 10, so the outside will be 10 times more permeable. But I think when it comes to windows, for me, a really important point is, and that's something I don't see so much, you really have to think about if you're talking American uh, style window, flange windows, you have to make sure that you either slope your sill, you have a back dam, and you really address those kind of like last resorts on, you know, water management once you're, as Sean mentioned, your window is going to eventually fail in 20, 25 years. And that's something that I've, I don't see a lot in the field. I see like flat sills and, and people just you know, we, we just pretend it's going to be fine somehow and rely on a little bit of sealant and call it our back dam. And I mean, yeah. we know what's happened to sealant. Anyways, whole other topic. Don't want to open the can too much. Um, <laughs> I hope I could answer your question and just want to bring awareness to the point. Uh, really uh, pay attention to your window sill, take it serious and, uh, and, and have a full system. Love it. Love it. All right. For the sake of time, everybody, believe it or not, we're at 50 minutes on this, guys. And you guys have all played by the rules. I'm, I'm, Etienne, Etienne almost went a little off course there, but we reeled him back in. He reeled himself back in. Listen, we have a bunch of other people out there, and it's always important that we acknowledge our audience and say hi and take some more questions here. Uh, and then I want to try and we'll do a speed round with our last questions after Beautiful. we get these. Sound good, Mark? Let's do it. All right. So, hey, listen, a big supporter and a huge offsite person, Jerry McCahey. Good morning, sir. That's all right. Better late than never. Better when late than to, never. When it comes to panelization, uh, our friend from Ireland knows better than anyone. These seams in this precision uh, requires all these products. So thanks for joining us, Jerry. Yeah, definitely, definitely. All right. And then uh, let's go here to Stefan. Stefan uh, Speckmeyer. What are your ACH values? Uh, 10 seconds or less. Let's each of you just go ahead and answer it. And I'm going to leave you all on the screen. We're going to start with uh, Etienne on this one since he was last in the last one. It depends on the building. Um, it can be, uh, of course, way below 0.6 for passive house. And it can be much more. It all depends on how you install it. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. You know what, Prudence, can you tell for our audience who may not even understand what that acronym is, ACH? I should have started with that. So ACH is a volume-based measurement of air tightness. This is air changes per hour. Perfect. All right. Uh, Adam, go. I think so. That's going to what our product's approved to. So our product is 0 0.03 um, air changes. And currently, we hold the world record for the most well, um, airtight building in the world. World record. So do you guys use 75 pascals over there or 50? 50. Yeah. Sean, what's your yeah, answer? We're, we're the same too when it comes to uh, to the membranes. Is again, is the operator has the ability to not install it properly and it can flop open in the wind and, and at the same time get, get down to below passive house levels. So if yeah. it's installed properly, we can achieve amazing numbers and really tighten up the box. Wow. Education, wow. training, the right products and the right install. We've, 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 we can't drive that home enough for the people that are unfamiliar. Just because you saw Sean or Adam or ATN represent one product today, uh, where you live and what your wall assembly is might dictate a different product. Don't listen for five minutes and say, I got the answer. I'm gone. I could do this. Ask more questions ask more questions love it bob hall i can't even, how do you say the last name halts velour yeah that's uh that's the buzzard in grand rapids uh, <laughs> uh if a car was built like a house that's the famous video of corbett lunsford we all love it right uh right right all right todd dewalt yeah. said very good points about materials tools training being the key and it truly is all right moving on here some more stuff hey Speed let's do that. we got we got Henry Chacal from France. Hey, thanks for joining us from France. Love it. Henry Love shared the four times this week, so he wins the he wins the amount of points for share. Uh, thank you. I wonder, I wonder what company he works with. He loves it. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's move it. I think he works for Pro Sega Purple, right? <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right. So Scott Carbon. 
Not according to PHI. I'm not sure what one he was commenting on that. Sean has, uh, uh, Scott hasn't had his coffee. There we go. According, according to PHI, to all climate zones are equal. Okay. Uh, well, if, if, if you want right, to say that right. Calgary and Miami and San Diego and Maine are the same, then uh, you need to get out a map. <laughs> I think I think he's referring more to the the certification criteria being the same independent of what climate zone you're in. Love it, love it. <clears throat> All right, and then we have a whoop whoop from great job, Susan Rally on YouTube. Thank you. All right. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. All for the way from YouTube. Thank you, Susan. I know, I know. We're 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 touching all corners of the earth and all corners of social media these days, which is a lot of fun. All right, guys. Let's get back to uh, the seriousness of the show and the questions. Uh, let me see if I can find where I was. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Did we do this one? What is the future of air tightness? And we're going to start with Sean on this one. Uh, all the codes are moving towards passive house levels. So we're going to be tight, tight, and tight. And now that we're getting our, our boxes uh, at lower levels, so they're not leaky sieves. Um, you know, being able to put in good ventilation and just following the passive house principles, ensuring we're building, you know, proper uh, buildings. So hold on, Sean, you don't get off that easy. What are the principles of passive house? Go oh, are you ready here? Oh. Number one, we're going to gift wrap it. So good air, continuous air tightness, lots of insulation. So putting the sweater on our box, excellent high performing windows and doors, excellent uh, uh, ventilation. So ERVs or HRVs. And again, minimizing the thermal bridges so that our materials aren't allowing for, you know, the heat and cooling to go through. And again, the insulation helps out with it. So, Ben, one, two, three, four, five. Hey, Sean. Sean, I've got a quick question on the future of air tightness. What's that sign that we see behind you? Can you tell us about that? I got to see this here. Airtight buildings, education, put out your signage, make sure people walk on the job site and they know this is an airtight building. And so they got to smarten up and behave and not poke holes in the buildings. Otherwise, we have an air boss have to go around and start taping. I'm a, I'm a big fan of uh, reminder signs on job sites for sure. As soon as you walk on, you got to send your message. Yeah. What you're trying to do? Hundred percent, hundred percent. Adam, go. Your turn. Um, quality construction. If the air tightness is done right by a contractor, we know they're going to be doing everything else right. That's the install of the windows, putting the heat recovery in, just the whole the whole project as a whole. So the future of air tightness is higher quality homes. Love it. That was a great point by Adam. Uh, we spoke so much today about tight buildings and air and bulk water and moisture. Uh, but as we've learned and as we have to re-communicate, while you're tightening up your buildings, ventilate right, ventilate right, ventilate right. Continuous ventilation, folks. It has nothing to do with heating, cooling. First ventilate. Then we'll talk about hot and cold. Love it. All right, Etienne, you're up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thanks Thanks for the point, Mark. Uh, air tightness is the first step in controlling your in, indoor air quality. The future of air tightness, um, it's definitely going to get tighter, uh, which means we will see buildings with less air leakage. Uh, air tightness has a huge energy saving potential, so it can help us with our global warming crisis. So I think that many, many uh, cities are go going to move much more towards airtight codes. Um, Vancouver is a great example with the step code 2032. It's going to be almost a passive house level. And I think across North America, airtightness over the next 10 years is going to be a very, very hot topic. Perfect. All right. It was funny. In this whole conversation today, this is the first time we've talked about energy. And uh, and I think it's just commonplace for this this bubble, this community, uh, and and we we're not skipping over it because all the all the solutions the three of you offer, uh, they they allow for comfort, and that's what people experience. They're not occupants; they're people, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, they all they all had a father. They all come from a family, and the comfort of the people around them. It is is crucial. So thank you for each of your solutions and for the insight that you provided today, Prudence. Yeah, well, I'd like to second what you're saying and add to that uh, very humanized look at what the building is doing in terms of comfort, that health is also another benefit. 
of the products that these guys have because essentially what we're doing is we're controlling the movement of vapor through the envelope of the building and when we do that we can prevent things happening like condensation um, and mold risk and mold risk has some very uh, extreme health consequences if gone unchecked and so I think uh, even looking at air tightness along with vapor control given that we're in this crisis right now with with COVID, uh, that many more people are going to become curious about having a building that's really going to not only give them comfort, but also health benefits of providing them with fresh filtered air, keeping out unwanted pollutants, and uh, preserving their health if, in fact, we do need to shelter in place more as time goes on. Perfect. Perfect. We have one last question. You think we can speed round through it? Let's speed round. Yep. Go, Dave. All right. Here it is. Last question. Can a paper membrane be used as well as liquid membrane on the same job? Oh, <laughs> uh, you know what? No, no, I'm no, no, that. That. I'll answer for all of us now. Trust the purple all the way. <laughs> oh, come on. Of course it can. Of course it can. They don't, we're, we're, we're all in this together. We're, every, every one of our products is as good as the, the next for a different type of situation. Yeah. 